record so we can share it for those that are not going to be able to join us. But we're already on a second page. It's great. <clears throat> um, so hope you guys had uh, fun kind of sorting through your produce and stuff that you got yesterday. I know it was a lot. Um, we will kind of take individual questions on it. Um, but first, we're going to kind of, um, we're going to split off for baking and culinary um, so that Chef Bob can take those of you that received a baking kit um, <clears throat> and uh, handle any specific questions related to that. And then uh, Justin, Chef Steve, and myself will stick in here for um, the culinary questions. So yeah, again, those that are just joining us, we're going to split off um, baking, and, baking and culinary. Um, and then we'll kind of, we'll come back together to answer any general questions and the like. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to go to get a baking room set up for you, Bob. As soon as I unmute Justin, because he has a bad habit of pushing the mute button. <laughs> One room manually create. Um, I think Dr. Flory wants to be unmuted as well. Oh, okay. Um, I'll, I'm going to allow participants to unmute themselves. Everyone is muted at this point. Um, if you can, just if you have a question, just wait just a second before you jump on there. Um, so I've got Bob, I've got Caitlin, I've got Maddie, um, Paige. Yori. One, two, three, four, five. I don't have a, do I have a Nathan? Nope. <clears throat> um, all right. That looks to be, okay. <clears throat> we'll see where we're at now. Um, Bob, your room should be going there. Um, Ocean is joining us. Did anybody raise your hand if you need to get into a baking classroom? Gabe, you got a culinary kit, so you're good here, I think. Did I miss anybody going over? <clears throat> Looks like we've got them all. Um, all right, so um, Chef Steve or Chef Justin, do you kind of want to start off with uh, what we have and kind of the the master inventory list and then how we'll be sharing that after our classroom or after our meeting here today? Yeah, I think, I think the, um, the most important thing to start today is that you need to have a game plan. Um, I think that everybody understands that we gave out a lot of food, uh, both produce, protein, and dry goods and getting organized is going to be the first step and i think we're going to try to help you with that today um so that you are aware of kind of where to start and maybe what proteins what proteins need to be used first and what proteins you might be able to freeze for a little bit um, obviously we're not expecting everybody to cook all this in the next 10 days um you know i think a, a fair expectation would be to see maybe uh, you guys cook twice a week with this stuff uh, a lot of what you have is going to stay good for a while. Uh, and I think we're going to try to go over some of that information today. Our goal is to kind of give you a direction to go um, that will entice some creativity. Um, you do not have everything you need in order to make every meal. Um, so you're going to have to get a little bit, get a little bit creative and use what you have at home as well. Um, and I think, uh, Steve, if you want to maybe share your screen and um, we'll talk about the master list for a second, but then Ziggy, you also have pictures. And I think being able to identify um, what we gave everybody so that they're aware of what it is and maybe how to use it would be a good first step as well. Also, just going back off of what Chef Justin said is that, you know, this, this is also probably are going to be more like our traditional classroom lab setting where you're going to be probably fixing one plate or maybe two plates um, with what you have. This might not be like a full on dinner. Um, 
entree, you know, with sides and everything for your whole family. So kind of going after that lab um, style where you're, you're preparing a plate for someone, for a judge to taste um, is really kind of that end goal um, to think about presentation and, um, you know, what it looks like as well. So. <clears throat> So Z, why don't you pull up the pictures first? And okay. I don't know, Steve, did you share the OG list with, with Ziggy? Uh, I have it, I can share it, but yeah, I sent it out in the email. Okay, so Ziggy, I don't know if you can, if you can pull up the, the picture and the list at the same time, kind of side by side. Um, I can do that. I don't know if, not, I don't know if that'll fit on your screen way, or not. Is, not the way I'm doing that right now, but hang on just a sec. <clears throat> All right, so I've got that. Now I've got this, Steve. I thought that was a... I sent one to your work and one to the chef school. Okay. I just have photos. Um, Justin, I'm not pulling up that spreadsheet. I don't know where it went. I, I can right, share well, it when you're done with photos. Okay. Yeah, we can just kind of go through it. But hopefully you all took the, the opportunity to kind of, you know, again, you yourselves take a look at what you had. Um, because there are going to be some kits that are a little bit different. So um, Justin, Steve, you guys want to kind of take over, or I can kind of, you know, point out certain areas um, of similar things. We've got several others. Um, and I would ask that um, any questions um, go to the chat box. I'll leave that chat window up, but that'll be the only way I'm able to see. <clears throat> um, all right, so first off, this is a picture by Doug. Um, and can you guys see enough of it? Can you see the all the way out to the edge. Yeah, if you want to start, uh, well, as I'm looking at it at the, t yeah, right there. Yep. And then just kind of go maybe hit proteins. Okay. So ground beef. Yep. That looks like pork. Um, we also had a question, maybe there might be a little bit more heavier of a, of a, you know, a fat, is that right? Yep. And there was also some loin in there. So that's a butt. It's going to be darker and it's going to have a little more fat in it. There's some loin in there that's going to be really almost white looking with virtually no fat on it at all. Okay. Uh, uh, chicken. That's the pre-cooked chicken uh, and it's taco season. So that's one. Uh, that'll keep for a little bit so you don't have to think about using that one right away. Uh, those are bone-in pork ribs. Those are fully cooked. Uh, so they're a heat and serve item. <clears throat> That's a game hen and there's another game hen half right below that. So like almost, almost everybody got two game hens. Maybe I think there's a couple that didn't um as far as that goes uh shrimps there was two kinds of shrimps there was the uh, 1620s um which is what's in this picture here and then there's some other ones that are smaller and pink um those are the little salad shrimps those the little small pink ones are already fully cooked so if uh, whatever you're if you're going to throw them into a pasta or throw them into your shrimp and grits or whatever it may be uh, those just need to go in right at the end so that would be lamb. So lamb was the dark meat in the Ziploc baggie. Uh, it was like a dark red. I think belt your ass. It kind of looked like uh, heart. Maybe it's not heart. It's uh, the, the lamb leg itself, which is going to be a little bit tougher cut of meat, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, kebabs maybe or stew. So not everybody got everything in the kits we had what we do 40 kits 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if you if you didn't get game hens, then you got uh, chicken wings or some other type of bone-in chicken. Um, everybody should have some type of bone-in chicken product. So either lamb or either chicken legs, game hens, or chicken wings. Um, and no, there were no lamb T bones. Maybe he's talking about this down at the bottom. That looks like turkey to me. And there should be no bones in the turkey either. Okay. So those were those were turkey boneless turkey thighs. They're they're pretty large, right? So they got cut down in the chunks. Yep. And they were frozen when they got packed. The big bag to the right that Ziggy's pointing at right now. Um, we had a couple different kinds of already cooked meat. Um, so some were braised short ribs and some were braised barbecue brisket. This picture right here is a barbecue brisket. <laughs> Um, let's just go through for some continuity. Like, let's go through this one right here real quick. Might show a little bit of a couple of the other differences, maybe. I guess it kind of gets a little hard. Uh, can you pull up my picture, Ziggy? Do um, you have that still? Sure. It wasn't one that was selected from the list, Justin. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you just show it off. Uh, Justin. Uh, the other, uh, no, 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 there you go. Okay. I guess I didn't have the other, any cooked meat. Never mind. That's fine. Sorry. That's okay. Um, there was a, another, this is another kind of a good one. Yeah. From Abby. Is there anything that we didn't cover here? So game hen, brisket, looks like she has a, the chicken breast, the turkey, ground beef. She has the bone and pork rib. She has the lamb meat and she has the turkey. So this is by far the average bag that went out is this picture here. <laughs> and the ground beef. Uh, you have in the little container is the chicken base. That's actually the, the demi-gloss, about a tablespoon of demi-gloss. Uh, that should make about a quart of chicken stock um, if you're gonna use it as chicken stock. Okay. Let's go through the uh, dry goods. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, It was kind of broken into three yeah. families almost. It was a, a noodle, um, a rice. Um, everyone got an arborio rice, which is gonna be a little bit thicker um, or a little bit more round of a kernel. And then you have kind of your more granular, very softer, like the grits and the polenta, is that right? Yeah, so um, you have the, the two granular ones. You have a white one and a yellow one. Uh, the yellow one's going to be your polenta. The white one's going to be your grit. Uh, as far as the rice goes, you have both just a long grain white rice and an arborio rice. Um, Looks like couscous. Believe, you, have, you have a bag of couscous, and you either have elbow macaroni or fettuccine, and you should have, I think, two bags of pasta. So here's one that got pasta two bags uh, yeah two bags of pasta um so i think there's maybe 10 or 12 people that got um black lentils which is uh, what the little black drip off baggie right there um this is our board also, yep you should also got any large flour tortillas most people got i think a couple of people did not um, and i think everybody got crepes as well so it looks like she got the short ribs in this one. Is that a short rib? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then in, in the containers, <clears throat> you should have gotten uh, shrimp, which we already talked about. Um, if you start the top, Ziggy, um, that is collard, chopped collard greens. And then you have tomato sauce to the left. And then you have salsa underneath that. And then you have some charro beans. Um, it's a mixture of Pinto, 
um, white northern bean and uh, chickpea. Yeah, are, it is. Those are not vegetarian beans. There is uh, some pork product in those beans. Um, then you have some apples, some diced apples. Those were originally meant for your crepes, uh, to make an apple crepe uh, with the powdered sugar that's up there next to the shrimp. Um, and as we get as we get going and kind of talking about some some guidance or some menu items, um, once again, these are just suggestions. It's completely 100% up to you guys what you do with all these products. Um, the container that Ziggy's on right now, that's your um, corn and pepper, roasted pepper mix. Uh, then you have three little containers underneath. The, you have the green chili sauce, that's like an enchilada sauce. And then you have a taco seasoning. Um, let's see. Did I missed anything. Um, and if, if for some reason yours don't necessarily match up or something like that, um, this will be a good time for us to kind of have that one-on-one -on -one time tomorrow or later t or like, you know, during this meeting um, for us to answer any individual questions. This is kind of a general overview, knowing that not everyone's going to have the same thing. Um, you know, some of the produce kits, they were pretty much standardized. Maybe the quantities are a little bit different. Um, but again, you know, we, we tried, I know that like this one doesn't have, um, a tomato, the tomato, uh, juice on it. Oh yeah. Good job. Um, uh, go, go back to that produce picture. Let's kind of go through that for a second. Okay. Uh, this one. Yeah, that's good. Um, start, we'll start at the top all the way down. Uh, that's spaghetti squash. Uh, so unless you're Bob, um, you're going to, cut this in half, scoop the seeds out, and you're gonna roast it. And then once you roast it, you can shred it into uh, what looks like little spaghetti noodles. And that can be a great side or a substitution for a pasta. Um, pineapple next to that. Right under the spaghetti squash, uh, you'll see something that looks like bananas that has black spots on it. Those are not actually bananas. Those are plantains. Okay, so you're going to want to cook those. You can either, uh, once, they're, once they have the dark spots on them, they're ripe. So then you can peel them uh, and roast them or peel them and fry them, uh, make a great garnish, uh, make some nice chips. Um, the, if you go two down, what, so what looks like green bananas, those are actually bananas. So you're going to want to let those ripen a little bit. Um, bananas foster, banana bread, any of those things would be good. I think just to reiterate what, what Justin said, these are supposed to be colored that way. These do not make them bad. Like this is actually the way you want yeah. them to be. Um, that, that makes it a ripe plantain. Um, they're very dense and um, not very chewable when they are like ripe. Is that correct? When they're not ripe, yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, then just to the right of those. Sweet potatoes. Um, right underneath the sweet potatoes, you have red beets. Right uh, to the left, you have tomatoes and bananas. Uh, and then you have all-purpose baking potatoes. You have yellow zucchini or yellow squash and zucchinis. Uh, red bell peppers, grapes, red onions, and white onions. I, I, so think, I think these are uh, cotton candy grapes, which um, are a kind of a, a unique varietal that has been recently introduced in the last few years. Um, it's kind of what my understanding was from the produce company. I don't think they are. They're not? No, uh, cotton, the cotton candy ones are green. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, Just kidding. <laughs> so, I, so I think... Thanks, Belcher. One of the most important things to understand here is going to be storage. Um, I'm sure this is a lot of food and trying to figure out what to do with all this food. If you don't have a ton of refrigeration space, it's going to be important. So as we're looking at some of the produce, not all of that has to be in the refrigerator. Right? Your onions, potatoes, beets squash, pineapple. Kind of like the left and the right almost is how they have it laid out. All that, yeah, all that stuff can sit out on your counter. Okay. Um, and then as far as your proteins go, um, which we're going to kind of talk about next, is, um, you know, as we make a game plan, think about two meals you're going to cook for the week, and then those, those proteins can stay out, and then the rest needs to go in the freezer. 
um, so that stays good. Uh, the game hens were frozen when you got them. The shrimp was frozen when you got them. There's a lot of frozen products when you got them. Um, and if it wasn't frozen when you got it, it was frozen earlier that morning. I think the most important thing, which we discussed earlier, is that we want to use up um, the chicken breast and the ground beef first, uh, because those have been out the longest. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the chicken breast, which we had yeah. here. There was another picture that had it. Uh, this one right there. That one, so, and the, which ground beef? The, this ground beef? Yes, that ground beef. Um, let's do a, a quick question. Does anybody have any questions on identification on any of these products before we share screens with Steve uh, to kind of show you the list that he's created that he will share out with everybody? Everybody's good on identification purposes. Raise your hand if you're needing assistance. I'm checking the second page. Anybody that's not on video, Zach, Anna, Josh, Alex, any of you guys have any questions on identification? Okay. Uh, Steve, do you want to screen share your OG list? Yeah, um, I can. This is going to be an Excel sheet that um, we're going to share to Google Classroom. Um, and essentially, it's everything that we had laid out is now in the, in the Excel sheet. Um, and what we're trying to help do is organize your thoughts a little bit so that we can have a game plan as we move forward. Because, you know, I, I do this for a living, see the, and we do this for a living. And even when I got home and laid all this stuff out on my counter, I'm kind of like, okay, now what? <laughs> so what, what am I gonna do with all this stuff? And where am I gonna put all this stuff? So I think having a plan as we move forward is gonna be the most important thing so that um, we can all be successful. You know, the goal is, of this is to kind of allow you guys to keep cooking and have some fun, not to make your lives harder, right? So uh, when we were on a call earlier today with Steve, Steve typed up this list and then uh, he just kind of started putting things together in groups just by clicking and dragging, um, saying, you know what? I, I think that these things go together, right? So our first lab that we talked about doing, which was, was the lab you were gonna get this week, um, was a type of sort of Mexican mac and cheese or a Mexican casserole. Um, and so what we're going to ask is that that still kind of stays one of the first things that you guys make just to kind of start this process off. Um, because a lot of uh, your containers, the salsa, the cheese, the green chilies, the black beans, the corn, all of those things were kind of mint and, and already pulled out ready to go for this lab. Um, I think that will help you not only utilize some of your ingredients to kind of get started, but also give you some direction as we move forward. Um, Steve, you want to take over here and kind of just explain what you're doing? <clears throat> yeah, so you should have, I guess, pretty much everything on the list, and there might be some things you don't have. There's things on this list that I didn't get in my boxes, so I'm just going to kind of ignore those things. Well, your but, list, your, the list that they can get is going to be editable too, so they, could be, they can delete and then type in whatever they have. Well, there you go. So, uh, so when I, I guess when I think about meal prep, I just think, okay, what things go together? Um, we originally thought let's make some kind of hamburger hot dish as one of our starting points. So that was ground beef, tomato sauce, salsa, corn, black beans, um, the taco seasoning, onion, noodles so i would cook my ground beef with some onion season with taco seasoning toss in the corn toss in some salsa a little bit of sauce cook the mac separately you're making a casserole little charo bean on the side you're done um when we talked earlier we talked about things like the spaghetti squash is something that i would roast i would never boil the spaghetti squash a uh, red beet is something I would roast, so roasted red beets. Um, if I got game hens or whole chickens, again, those are things I would roast. So if I'm going to turn the oven on, I'm not going to turn it on just to make one 
thing, you know, I'm going to try and utilize it. So this meal combination right here, that's basically a roasted dinner. And what we hope that you're able to do is kind of raid your pantry and raid your refrigerator and say, hey, you know, can I, you know, this, I like my spaghetti squash with, you know, a little bit of fresh herbs and butter, you know, I'm going to brine my, my game hens. So I'm going to need, you know, a quarter cup of salt and a quarter cup of sugar and a half gallon of water. And I'm going to let them sit in there for about six hours. And, you know, then I'm going to salt pepper, you know, maybe a little poultry seasoning. Uh, my, my favorite way to eat beets is I'll roast them, peel them, dice them, and then toss them with a little bit of butter and fresh horseradish or jarred horseradish. So if you've got things in your fridge or in your pantry, that's where you're going to round out your meals. But uh, Well, and because this, this sheet is going to be editable, they can even add them in you know, your, add your, pro, your produce, you know, this isn't going to have any of your dairy products, your eggs, your, your milk, your butter, you know, but this could be a good working document as you're kind of planning your menus out. The, the whole idea is to be able to see the big picture so that you're not just blowing through the, the dry goods. You're not just cooking your pastas and your rices and then adding a protein and not utilizing any of the produce or anything like that. Really thinking of cohesive, um, dishes that you can kind of put together um, utilizing all this stuff is that kind of right yeah so you know Justin Justin talked about not doing a a sweet crepe but doing a savory crepe so you know we're gonna take our turkey thighs our collards our red peppers and we're gonna make a a, a velouté you know, it's going to be a tight one, but we're going to roll that with our crepes. Then we're going to, you know, again, I got some Parmesan cheese in my fridge, so I'm going to sprinkle some parm over the top of that, and I'm going to bake it. So I've got, you know, uh, a nice mid-afternoon snack. Because like Ziggy said earlier, a lot of these things aren't going to feed, you know, four people, but there's enough turkey thighs, and if you bulk it up with, you know, red peppers and onions and mushrooms, you've got yourself a nice little stew there that you can fold into those crepes. So to kind of like take it to that next step and maybe off of the, from the spreadsheet, now what do I do? You know, I, be creative. Like you, I think all of you know how to research and um, think about, you know, recipes, use your own experiences. Like, oh, I've had this, I wanna try to do it. Mm -hmm. That's how I cook is based off of things that I've had in outside restaurants that I want to try and reproduce um, because I know that they taste good and I want to see if I can do it as well or if not better. Um, and so there's, you know, stick to your, to your well-known websites, all recipes, um, food network, but use Google. Google's your friend. Say, you know, I mean, Justin just put in like grits and you know uh, what can I do with grits and came up with, you know, all kinds of, um, recipes for that um, and then you know thinking about what other things you could you have to include in those recipes that might not um, include them so looks like we have our, our our baking friends back is that right um, some I'll, might be back I'll close the other rooms are you done Bob Yes, I am. Um, I was listening to Steve talk about crates, but they need to take into consideration bananas. You know, like if they have ice cream at the house, they can do a banana crepe. Uh, they got plantains um, that they can kind of set up and fry and fold in as well. They have apples. So they, they got a few things that. Oh, yeah. Lots, lots of options. And that's yeah, no, we just we want you all to utilize as much of this as possible, um, and we want to see as many different things come out. And you you all have the opportunity to put your own unique spin on things. Um, you know, the other important thing is is that we hear um, we hear back from you on what you're doing, and you're reporting back, and you're sharing pictures. Um, chef school at smsd.org is that final destination. That's that's the deliverable. That's the only assignment, if you want to even call it that. Um, just we want to see what you're doing. 
And then if you have individualized questions regarding a plate or an ingredient, um, you know, take that directly to your instructor. That'll be the easiest way um, for you to have those questions answered. You're welcome to send it to chef school. Um, we're not set up where all four of us have access to that currently, um, but I'm, I'm on my phone all the time. Uh, so I will do my best to get that to whoever it might need to get to immediately. But Mac, Mac asked if he can make his own dishes with the ingredients. You absolutely do not have to follow any ingredients that or any recipes that we're telling you to do. You are fully 100% able to use utilize these ingredients to make whatever it is that you want. To reiterate, all we're asking is whatever it is you make, you know, jot down what ingredients you use and then take pictures of it and send it to us. The uh, baking students, uh, the only one requirement we have with them is that they're actually either text or email um, what they're making. Yeah, two and chefs schools. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that we can, we have one place for all of this. Yeah. Where we, we've got a lot of, a lot of students to keep track of digitally and we, we all want to make sure that, um, we have also a lot of eyes on us right now because of what we're doing. I mean, I, I hope that all of you took a second to watch the, the article or the news piece on us um, last week. And we have, um, we have another one coming out with the district. That being said, um, you know, if you want to cook tonight, try and give me photos back tomorrow. I'm submitting um, our information toward to Shawnee Mission School District as well as another magazine. Um, so this is an opportunity to have your photos possibly printed and or displayed on a website um, through the district. So think about that. Um, and we just we want to know what you're doing. Um, and you know yeah. What questions anybody, does anyone have? Oh go ahead Justin. I was gonna ask if anybody had any questions. Um, you know, I can I can screen share my thought process just real quick to give some direction if you guys want, or if you have any specific questions. Um, Iman asked about what goes in the freezer for as far as proteins. So as of right now, what I would tell you, or what I would like to see happen, is that your chicken breast and your ground beef get cooked in the next couple of days. Outside of that, you can put everything else in the freezer and then pull it as you need it. Um, when you're looking at your produce, uh, keep in mind on what, what's gonna last the longest. Ziggy, can you pull up in a picture of your produce again one more time? You know, things like your spaghetti squash and your potatoes and your beets and your onions, you know, those, all those sort of, uh, um, Root vegetables or the more winter vegetables are gonna are gonna last the longest. Your zucchini and your squash and your tomatoes, um, those are not gonna last as long. So you want to try to utilize those as soon as possible so that you're you know, not letting them go bad. And it's almost kind of a I, I've always found it to be kind of a textural thing, really. Like if it feels hearty and it came from the earth, maybe it's a little bit more stable on a counter. And if it has a softer skin, or I mean, is that is that just me or no, it's pretty close. Um, and then the other thing you guys are gonna want to use up um like the the corn um, that we gave out and that kind of stuff i would suggest doing your mexican style lab first because those things have been pulled um, you don't want to freeze that kind of stuff so uh some type of mexican whether it's um the uh casserole or um, I'm going to make sort of a, a Mexican style lasagna tonight, I think, um, with those ingredients. So um, use those first and the rest of it kind of take 20 minutes, take 30 minutes today before, um, you know, after we get off the call here and uh, we'll, Ziggy will share this Excel sheet so that you can kind of start piecing some things together. So you have a game plan, you know how to proceed. Um, you don't want to just be standing in front of the refrigerator, staring at it, wondering what to do. Um, so I, I guess I'll screen share real quick, just so I can show you my thought process. Um, just try to piece some, some things together as I knew what was what. Um, I'm still left with a couple things over here that I'm going to try to piece together with some proteins that I have, but... Mm -hmm. 
Um, I have a jar of the Marsala sauce all ready to go in my refrigerator, so I'm gonna use that. Um, I'm gonna try to build a pastor spit so I can make some pastor tacos on my grill. We'll see how that goes. Um, and I gotta find some baking soda, baking powder to make my bread. But outside of that, this is kind of where my my personal flavor lies. And so I'm, I'm relying on my past experiences, kind of like you said, to cook what I know. And he also said, I'll, I'll screen share one more time. Um, I Googled, hey, what can I do with instant grits? And I have 53 ideas that just popped up on the very first website on Google. Mm -hmm. right, just just by one just by one Google search. So if you yeah. get stuck on something. Oh, um, can you just go back to that real quick? Oh, oh yeah. Sorry. Um, you know, can you go back to your just your Google search? Um, I, I find this kind of helpful um, when I when I'm looking at recipes just to see they might have they might have five stars, but how many people actually cooked them? So like the first one has 110 people made, the second one had eight and the last one had two. So I'm gonna probably lean on the easy fried grits or whatever it might be. They're always gonna have kind of that rating process. So kind of use that to vet what you're doing. Um, and then also look for the, for the big names, you know, your food network, your all recipes, um, that kind of a thing. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't just step outside and, and go to something else because, you know, we're going on what everyone else does. Um, I also always read the comments on recipes. I'm doing a, um, a can uh, chicken in my oven tonight. Um, and so I saw a recipe and the top three comments said, there's no way that you can cook a chicken in this time that it says I went another 40 minutes and it was perfect at a higher temperature. So now I, I'm just took, took the guesswork out of going through this recipe and having a raw chicken. I know what I need to cook it for and how long prior to going into it. So kind of thinking the process all the way through, even with your recipes that you're finding, um, and then make those notes. We, that's what we want to hear back from. You, you're going to be your own judge and your own critique on your plate. Um, <coughs> if it needed more seasoning say it needed more seasoning and make a suggestion on it um, the produce company is really looking at us as uh, a way for them to kind of share with other people how to use produce and kind of this at-home meal kit now that people are cooking more and they're not they're tired of doing the same old thing this is how you kind of shake things up by using produce that you might not always have access to so All right, any other questions? If anybody's got any tips and tricks on how I can get more TikTok likes, shoot them my way. Yeah, Rachel Dawson needs to share her secrets for TikTok, blowing up the world on her first video. <laughs> um, all right, well, we're going to be online um, and tomorrow at 1 o'clock for anybody that – digs into things tonight, maybe has additional questions, um, you're welcome to reach out to any one of us individually or uh, just email Chef School SMSD. Um, if you're able to get anything done tonight, please shoot photos over. I'm looking for stuff to submit um, for our next article. So um, we are, you know, thank you for your patience yesterday, but I hope you understand like what it took to kind of pull this off. Um, and how important it was to all of us that you all have this opportunity. Um, and we're just, we're thankful that we're still in, the in this position that we can continue doing what we do and what we love to do. Um, so anytime we see these photos there, they just, um, I, I'll speak for myself. It, it just, it, it's really inspiring. Um, and I wish I had this as an opportunity when I was in high school. <laughs> I know Justin, you did, <laughs> but so uh, without any further, thank you for Dr. Fleury and uh, the young upcoming culinarian, future Rodmore Bistro. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody, if that's it.
We are done. Uh, again, we'll be here tomorrow at one o'clock. If you need anything, look at Google Classroom. I'll have that Excel spreadsheet up uh, in just a few. And uh, yeah. All right. Talk soon. Are we uh, following up? Yeah.